when the MDGs were designed, uh, there was very little input from Parliament. There was virtually no input from Parliament. Uh, the Botswana uh, delegate uh, mentioned that uh, uh, the MDGs have always been the preserve of the executive. I think it's true, and that is why uh, parliamentary involvement has only been recent, and this has been born out of the realization uh, that uh, the MDGs, many of them were lagging, and that there was very little likelihood of them being achieved come uh, to, uh, 2015. So uh, we are very glad that early on in the process of uh, reflecting on what happens after 2015, uh, there is this broad-based consultation among various stakeholders, including uh, parliaments. I would just want to identify a number of challenges that parliaments, especially parliaments in Africa, coming from Africa myself, uh, are facing. First of all, when we talk about uh, uh, ownership. A lot has been said that development policies and plans have to be nationally owned and that uh, parliaments have uh, a strong role to play uh, in uh, achieving this ownership. And the first dilemma that we face is uh, the complexity of uh, the issues that are involved when it comes to ownership, for example, of the MDGs. We are asking ourselves, will parliaments become move from being political institutions into technical institutions? Is there a balance to be struck between the political implications of the work of Parliament and the technical uh, knowledge and savoir faire that Parliament require to deal with some of the complex issues of development? There is this perception that uh, Parliament, uh, MDGs are something that have to be dealt with by the institutions of the uh, South because that's their problem. And so the uh, parliamentarians of the North do not have a sufficient knowledge of uh, what it is uh, that the MDGs uh, imply. So we think again that there is a challenge here in promoting awareness among uh, both parliamentarians of the North and those of the South towards the achievement of the common objectives uh, enshrined in uh, the, uh, the N MDGs. And uh, a problem that is more specific, I think, to the younger democracies is that uh, we witness a turnover, a high turnover in uh, parliamentary membership when elections uh, take place. And uh, this means that whatever capacity you build, whatever knowledge you build among uh, parliaments or the various uh, issues related to the MDGs, this may come unraveled following the next elections because uh, maybe 60% of the parliamentarians will no longer be there and so that knowledge is lost. So there is a challenge here of how to build institutional capacity, institutional memory to address the issues of uh, um, governance and MDGs in general. When we talk about oversight and transparency, we're always looking at uh, Parliament holding the executive to account for the use of resources. But we are not sufficiently focused on what Parliaments are doing themselves to be accountable. Who are they accountable to? Is it to the people who have elected them? I tend to say yes. But increasingly, uh, in the context of the discourse on aid effectiveness, where donors are laying emphasis on the efficient use of the uh, development aid, there is also an increasing pressure on the institutions of governance in the country to uh, be accountable to these donors. And so there is a balance to be struck between accounting to the people, government accounting to the people, and government accounting uh, to donors. An increasing number of uh, parliaments are instituting what we call uh, development funds, constituency development funds, to uh, respond to the needs of their constituents. And this, in a way, this detracts from the original functions of parliament, that are lawmaking, resource allocation. We need to address this issue and find out exactly why it is that parliaments are now involved directly in development activities which should be the preserve, for example, of the executive arm of government. Uh, given the evolving uh, nature of the role of the parliamentarian, the parliaments around here, and the expectations of the people, parliaments are today more resourced than ever. The conditions uh, that were prevalent when the MDGs were designed, as Charles called them, onerous, are no longer what they are today. We have parliaments more endowed with human resources, parliamentarians more knowledgeable, material resources available there. And the challenge now is how to transform the potential involved in all of this into independent, 
effective institutions, institutions that have more teeth, that can play a strong role in laying uh, a foundation for uh, future uh, uh, development and I think that that is the main challenge facing parliaments today especially parliaments in Africa that have the normative framework that is already there somebody said we don't need uh, other uh, frameworks we have enough norms the challenge is ensuring that these norms are implemented effectively and efficiently for the benefit of the people